Good morning and welcome to Gross Point United Methodist Church. I am Dar McGee. Carolyn Barth was supposed to be here to do the welcome and help with the Advent reading. And she had something come up and will not be here, so I'll be substituting for her and then Emily Bianchi will also be helping me. Um, whether you're in the building to help with the service or you're joining us virtually, we welcome you on this third Sunday of Advent. Good morning, church, and good morning, congregation. Good morning, community from our virtual congregation. Infant holy, infant, infant. We celebrate that today, this season, and hopefully all the days of our lives. As we go to our time of pastoral prayer, I'd like to share some joys. Oftentimes, when we go to our prayer time, it's to Prayer, in, prayer intercession for those who are struggling with loss of loved ones or physical afflictions, and we continue to do that, absolutely. But sometimes, particularly on a Sunday like this, let's find the joy of God's presence in our life. Many of you may know that uh, we have a bit of a relationship with the Emmanuel United Methodist Church at East Point, and uh, Pastor Albert Rush is a friend and a colleague and <laughs> Poor guy was actually one of my former students and is a good pastor anyway. But he's leading that church to feed the hungry and we've partnered for years, Gross Point and Emmanuel. And our outreach committee led by Beth Blunden has put a challenge out to the congregations to every one of us to bring food to Emmanuel to help feed up to 90 families a week. And I've gotten calls from Pastor Rush thanking us, and I wanted to share those with, with you and with those participating. And also last night, Pastor Rush sent me a uh, video um, on Facebook of thanking us. So if you happen to see it, I think it'll be posted on the Gross Point website by all means, or our Facebook website. Please um, know that you're appreciated, and it's with joy that we can partner and help to feed the hungry. Speaking of thankfulness, I'd like to pray for our music ministry. Doug Dykstra, our organist. Patty Greenwall, our music director, choir director. And Tamara Bobby, our children's choir director. Although our choirs can't meet because of the pandemic, they bring value and depth to our worship experience. So thank you so much for them. And continue to pray for them as we go through this time. And let's not forget our techies the person helping to video this and make it look like we know what we're doing when I certainly don't. The sound techs, Charlie Van Basler helping to put this service together as our worship chair. There's so many pieces that go on behind the scenes, uh, the technical part of it that I know very little about and we're better off if I don't get involved, but let's pray and give thanks for that. So let us pray with thanksgiving for those who are using their gifts and graces to make a difference. 
and then quietly lift up those who are struggling with the physical afflictions, depression with the pandemic, money worries, or maybe even the loss of loved ones. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Gracious and holy God, we give you thanks for the gift of your holy presence. And in this time of the season where we prepare for Christmas, may we, may we be reminded and mindful that we celebrate the birth of an infant born in Bethlehem, sent to earth to teach us and to model how it is we should live, and to finally suffer and die that we might live forever. Move in our spirits, Lord, during this season to draw us closer to you, enabling us to use the gifts and graces we have to further the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ. We thank you for those who step up beyond what we could imagine, doing things that a year ago we had no thought of doing. And Lord, we know that even in these bright days of thanksgiving and joyfulness, we continue to struggle. Those in our midst have physical afflictions. We mourn the loss of loved ones over this, these last several months. We look with anxiety and expectation for what the future will hold. But Lord, during this time, help us to prepare for the birth of our Savior, to celebrate his birth, to celebrate the gifts and the graces that come by your love. And may we find ourselves joyful in all that we do. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray, that, pray this prayer and the prayer that he taught us so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we continue through the Advent season, we will light candles representing Jesus the Christ and symbolizing various aspects of the Incarnate One. On the first Sunday, we were reminded of the hope that we can find in his presence. Last Sunday, we lit the second candle of our Advent wreath. This candle reminds us of the peace that we find in our relationship with the Prince of Peace. Today, we light the third candle of the Advent wreath. This candle reminded us of the peace that we find in our relationship with the Prince of Peace. Today we light the third candle of our Advent wreath, I'm sorry. This candle reminds us of the joy that we find in Christ and through Christ. When the Lord restored his people in Zion, they were like people who dreamed. Their mouths were filled with laughter and joy. Then it was said among their nations, the Lord has done great things for us. May the true presence of hope and peace of Christ be with you and yours throughout the Advent season. And may the joy of his presence be part of your journey. Now, may we open ourselves to the joy of God's presence as we listen to this musical selection.
Thank you, Debbie and David. Joy to the world. I pondered that this past week about what is joy? Happiness? Contentment? Good things happening? Or is it something that's more unconditional than that? Joy, in the biblical sense, goes deeper than what we typically think of it. And I invite you just for a few minutes to ponder what that might mean. In the joy that comes to the world in the Christ child, we find hope, we find strength, frankly, we find warmth in the embrace of grace that comes with God's love. The joy that comes in the biblical sense goes beyond everything's rosy and everything's clipping along just the way we want it. The psalmist wrote one time when he was really struggling that joy comes in the morning. He wrote that in the night of his struggles and discontent. He knew that in the midst of his, trial, his trials and his tribulations, that joy was coming. True joy is knowing that we're in the holy presence of a loving God, coming to earth to be with us, promise to never leave us or forsake us, and in our darkest hours, promising that light and joy come with the tomorrows that lay ahead. The biblical sense of joy to the world that we celebrate at Christmas is not that all the Christmas shopping's done, not that all the packages are wrapped and the tree looks perfect and the dinner is ideal and the family's gathering is good and the garlic children love what they got and all the clothes fit and there's no long lines at the malls or Amazon is no longer coming to the door dropping off more packages, but true joy is finding our cup is half full all the time. Finding ourselves joyful in our most challenging times. I had a good day yesterday. I'll tell you why. I got my Christmas shopping done. Joy to the world. But it wasn't just that. I found joy in these masks that we have to wear. I don't like wearing these things. It's so, I can't see when people smile at me unless their eyes twinkle. I struggle with it, candidly. And while I was out Christmas shopping yesterday, I was wearing a mask. Everybody in the store was wearing a mask, and the young lady was wrapping a gift I had purchased, and there was some Christmas music playing in the store. And I found myself singing quietly to myself, and I realized with joy that people could not see my lips moving, so they didn't think I'd lost my mind and began to talk to myself. So there is something good about wearing a mask. Besides protecting ourselves and one another, as, and it also shows an, as a symbol that we care for one another, it allows us to sing quietly to ourselves. And I found myself joyful that I was singing Christmas carols in a store. The package was the perfect gift. Don't tell my wife, but my shopping is done. And it's wrapped with care, and I could sing. And I thought as I got back in my car later that it's really a good day. Not because the shopping went so well, not because the clerk at the store was so pleasant, not because the Christmas music was there, but it, God was present in all of that. And it is in that holy presence we find joy in all circumstances. Joy to the world, friends. The Lord has come. May we celebrate and love and live with a joyful expectation that hope comes tomorrow. Joy comes in the morning. The Lord is with us, and the Lord will come again. Be blessed, my friends. And now as we prepare for our time of offering, this is a time for you just to pause for a minute at home and ponder the joy that is in your heart. The struggles that you have are trivial compared to the promise of God's holy presence. May the joy of the Lord be with you. Now would be a good time to write checks. The mission and ministry of Jesus Christ continues through Gross Point United Methodist Church. We continue to feed the hungry. We continue to love our neighbor. We continue to serve God. If you haven't previously, now's a good time to go online and sign up for online giving.
But more than anything else, pause and give thanks to God for the gifts and the graces and the hope that he gives you that you might be joyful. Now enjoy this musical selection that comes from Britt and Tamra. Britain Tamra. Would you pray with me? Gracious and holy God, from the abundance that you are, you bless us with so very much. And out of faithfulness, Lord, we return that which was always yours. Bless these tithes and offerings. Bless the hands and the voices. Bless the lives that are committed to you to further the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ. We thank you. Help us to grow in our faith. Help us to transform the world. Help us to love you and love our neighbor in ways that bring you joy. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. This morning's scripture reading comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 24. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. 
This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As you can tell, this service this morning is a little bit different. Sermon part two. Paul writes to the church in Thessalonica about not to quench the spirit, but to remain faithful, to be diligent in their prayer life, to reflect upon what is meaningful and important in their faith. What is it that became trappings of self-interest and self-righteousness? Paul writes to the church in Thessalonica that once had been a bit of a thriving congregation, but they had gotten so used to what always was, and then in the midst of that, they'd almost created idols for themselves. And they worshipped the norm, and this is the way we've always done it. And Paul comes preaching grace and faith, and they rebelled against it. And the Spirit of God moved amongst them, and in due time, they were transformed, and they became a crown jewel of Paul's ministry. A church and a congregation that he, he was proud of, that he loved, that had become more faithful in their faith practices rather than just going through the motions of doing church. And so during this time of Advent, we are called to reflect upon our faithfulness. It's easy during Christmas, during this Advent season, during the holiday season, to do what we've always done. We do a lot of that. We have the same Christmas tree every year. I take it out of a box. It's in three pieces. It's pre-lit, so when I put the three pieces together, it almost all lights. In my opinion, it has to have white lights, not the color ones. It always goes in the same corner of our living room. It has its same tree skirt around it, the same decorations on the mantel. We change the picture over the fireplace. We have our traditions. But let us not be trapped by our traditions. Those are just worship or just decorations. During Advent, we are called to ponder why we have Advent, why we have the Christmas traditions and the holiday trappings. What is the meaning and what does our faith say about those? And so we sit and we look at the tree and we're reminded that the evergreen reminds us of an unending love that God has for us. The lights being the light of Christ in our hearts and us into the world. It calls us to be diligent and intentional about our faith development, to not go through the motions as the Thessalonians once did, but to re-examine, to, to be changed, to be transformed, to find newness even in the old, that that would take us into the tomorrows of faithful, holy presence. Friends, we are called to be God's creatures. God is not done speaking to us. God continues to call his people. God continues to mold his people. God continues to call us to be drawn closer and closer and closer to the creator, to the redeemer, to the strength, to the hope. And in the process, we'll find ourselves drawn closer to one another. We will find newness in the old and in the traditions. We'll find new friends and new traditions that speak to us just as they once did as children. And in many ways, we'll look back on the Advent season of 2020 as a good season of faithful reflection. It may not feel like it now. We're still pandemic sensitive, mask and social distancing. But remember, joy comes in the morning. And like Paul instructs the Thessalonians, be diligent in our prayer. Do not quench the spirit. Do not take for granted what God has given us. But instead, in all of these things, find the freshness and the hope and the grace and the love of the season. Now, may you enjoy this musical selection of angels we have heard on high.
Good morning, church. Think of a glorious sunrise or sunset you have seen. No wonder some people worshiped the sun as a god. We know, we though know the one true God is not the sun, but the maker of the sun. However, we associate light with God, as did our Jewish ancestors in the faith. Bright clouds, a burning bush, a pillar of fire were signs of God's presence for them. Light helps us see things. Jesus gives us the truth about God and about life, our origin and our destiny. Light guides us as we travel. Jesus guides us safely through life to our heavenly home. Light promotes growth and life. Jesus brings us everlasting life. Light warms and comforts. Jesus welcomes and calms us. Light prevents crime. Jesus is goodness itself. Light dispels darkness, which stands for evil. Jesus pierces the darkness of sin and death and conquers them. All of the darkness in the world cannot put out one candle flame. Jesus cannot be overcome by evil. <clears throat> God sent John the Baptist to tell us about the light, Jesus, so that everyone would believe. John wasn't the light. He only came to tell us about the light. Jesus is the one true light who gives light to everyone. Let's think about light in our lives. At this time of year, we see lights everywhere that remind us of the coming of Jesus, the true light that John told about. Those lights can help us remember that Jesus is the one true light in our heart and in our lives. Jesus brought light into the darkness of this world. Think of a way Jesus brings light into your heart and life. Train your heart to seek the light of Christ by noticing all the lights around you throughout the day. Everything from the sunrise to holiday lights to the little light at the back of the refrigerator. Stuck in rush hour traffic? Let the brake lights on the car in front of you prompt you to use your Advent prayer. Come Lord Jesus, my hope is in you. Now please enjoy our last musical selection, Silent Night. Silent Night Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Heidi. Last Friday was the beginning of Hanukkah for our Jewish brothers and sisters. Part of the Hanukkah tradition is there's part of the liturgy that says, and may next year, may we worship in Jerusalem. As this was our 2020 version of Music Sunday, let us steal that idea that next year our Music Sunday will be in the sanctuary, face to face, arm in arm, and our voices lifted. But in the meantime, 
May the joy, the faith, the hope, and the love of Christ be with you. May God's love enfold you. May the arms of grace encircle you. May the Holy Spirit empower you. And may you be the church in a hurting world. And may God be with you always. Amen and amen. Hello, it's time for some ministry opportunities that are offered by the church. Uh, the first one is Luminaria and Butter Braids. If you're in Gross Point, in just a few minutes after we end the service, come on over to the church so you can pick up your Butter Braids and your Luminaria kits. They will be available outside the sanctuary doors between 11 a.m. and noon. Please wear a mask and respect physical distancing when you pick up your items. You will no longer be able to order butter braids, but you can still order luminarias. You have that opportunity until Tuesday. Um, the information was included in an email that went out this morning. Um, there will be a link that you can click on to still order luminaria kits. Each kit contains six white paper bags, enough sand for the bags, and six candles. You may request multiple luminaria kits and we are suggesting a, suggesting a free will offering of $5 to cover the expenses. By the way, next Sunday, you'll be able to pick up butter braids and luminaria also, and you may also drop off your Advent food box. Speaking of Advent food box, let me give you some information about that. The Outreach Committee has asked every family in our church to fill a box with food that can be donated to the food pantry to our neighbors at Emmanuel United Methodist Church in East Point. Pastor Ray spoke of that earlier in the service. Uh, many of our people jumped ahead, so many boxes have already come in and Outreach has already started delivering them to Emmanuel Church. The church is very grateful for our support, but the need there is great and growing still. The Outreach Committee would very much like to have 100% participation in this important event, so please consider what you can provide to help someone in need. If you have questions about this, you may contact Beth Blunden. I now have a message from our Staff Parish Relations, Relations Committee. Like many of you, Gross Point United Methodist Church's lay staff employees have had to respond to a number of challenges throughout 2020. We are proud of all that they have achieved despite the difficult circumstances they've endeavored this year. We'd like to recognize their service with a holiday bonus, but this bonus is only possible because of your generous support. Please consider helping give the lay staff a bonus this year by sending a check to the church or through the online giving in each case. Please, sure in, please make sure you indicate that this is for the staff bonus. Um, liturgists. We are preparing for the new year, and we're also recruiting liturgists that are needed every Sunday in 2021. Jennifer Skalski is the person to contact about fulfilling that important job. Contact information for Jen is in, the mornings, is in this morning's email and also in the Tuesday newsletter. The American Red Cross is offering another blood drive hosted by Gross Point United Methodist Church. It is Wednesday, January 27th. It's not too early to sign up or donate to volunteer to help on, on that day. The Tuesday newsletter will have the links for the donor sign up and, probably all, and also where you can sign up to help. That's all for today on the ministry opportunities, but there will be a coffee hour following this service. Joan Richardson will be introducing us to a whole bunch of new members today, so stay tuned after the chimes if you want to watch and meet these new folks. If you have announcements for the congregation, please send them to info at gpumc.org before Wednesday night. Thank you and have a blessed week.
Good morning. I'm Joan Richardson. Welcome to Coffee Hour. I've been thinking a lot lately about Coffee Hour and what we did there beyond drinking coffee and eating cookies. And one of the main things, of course, is that it was the place we met and got to know each other. You don't meet anyone when you sit in a church pew. You meet them when you walk around Fellowship Hall with a cup of coffee in your hands. Well, even in these crazy times, we have new people attending church. Their faces are often obscured by masks, but they're here, and we need to know who they are. They attended during the summer when we were outdoors, and now they're watching the live stream, and they're trying to figure out the best way to connect with the rest of us. So to help with that, today I'm going to introduce you to seven of our newest attendees at church, people who I personally hope will eventually join because they all seem like really wonderful and very interesting people. So first, let me introduce you to Elizabeth Johnson. Elizabeth is originally from Petoskey and says she comes from a long line of Methodists. She lived in Jackson, Wyoming for several years, but returned to Michigan recently to be closer to family. She landed in Gross Point Park because she wanted to be on the water. She works as an underwriter at Quicken Loans and likes to ski, bike, paddleboard, kayak, and enjoy as much sunshine as possible. She says she's a very novice sailor, so she can make the boat move, but with very little grace. Next up, Jim and Lynn Colson. Jim and Lynn are not new to the area. They both grew up in Gross Point Woods, and that's where they still live. They have three grown children and four grandchildren in the Detroit area. Jim retired last spring after 42 years in information technology sales and marketing. The Colsons enjoy music and theater, traveling and biking, and Jim's also a golfer. They started looking for a new church that was younger, growing, and active in the community, and they found us while we were offering outdoor services. Next, meet Anna Dyatlovich and Logan Miller. If you've been watching the virtual services, you saw Anna and Logan last week when they were serving as liturgists so they are wasting no time getting involved. Anna and Logan grew up in Indiana and moved to Gross Point Woods from Indianapolis in July after Anna got a job here. She works for ATF where her work involves collecting intelligence aimed at getting illegal weapons off the street. Logan telecommutes in his work for the Indiana Donor Network, which is the organ transplant company in Indiana. In his work, he serves as a liaison between the donor network, law enforcement, pathologists, and coroners. And when they're not working, they like to hike and camp with their husky, Bella. Finally, meet Dale and Jeanette Lewis. Dale and Jeanette moved to Gross Point Farms last summer after living in Petoskey for 28 years. They were active there in the Petoskey UMC. They retired about 10 years ago from the Petoskey Public Schools Jeanette was a high school health teacher, and Dale was an elementary school principal. And they decided to move here to be closer to their daughter, Sarah, and her family, who live in the woods. By the way, Sarah is an oboist with the Detroit Symphony Orchestra, so maybe we'll get her to play at church some Sunday. Okay, now here's one of the best small world connections I've run across in a long time. Dale and Jeanette were attending one of our outdoor services last summer, when across the way they spotted Elizabeth Johnson, who you just met. Well, it turns out that Elizabeth attended the elementary school in Petoskey, where Dale Lewis was principal, and was once in a health class taught by Jeanette Lewis, and their families attended the same church in Petoskey. Just goes to prove that United Methodists are everywhere. That's all I have for this week. If we have other new members that I miss, please reach out and let me know and I'll introduce you in a future coffee hour. For now, as always, please keep wearing your masks, washing your hands, and staying physically distant from others. When we gather together again, I really want to see you all back at church. See you soon.